This lesson will take a look at what's called the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is a specific formula for solving quadratic equations. If you take a look at the graph on the right side here, and we're given the equation as well, you'll notice that the x-intercept are, are, are not integers. It looks like the x-intercepts are probably around negative 0.5 and about 3.5. And we would find those by factoring the quadratic x squared minus 3x minus 2. But this won't factor. Uh, in order to factor, we need to find two integers that add to negative 3 and that multiply to negative 2, and those numbers don't exist. But the fact that it can't be factored doesn't mean there aren't, aren't intercepts. It just means that there are, we have to find another way to find them. And so they do exist. We can see them on the graph, about, about negative a half and about 3.5. Now, so if you have a, a quadratic equation always looks something like this. If you rearrange and set equal, it equal to zero, then there's a quadratic term, which has the x squared or whatever the variable is squared. So we'll call it ax squared. A is the coefficient of the quadratic term, plus bx. bx is called the linear term. The coefficient is b, uh, plus some constant in the end that I'll call c. So ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero is, a, in general, what a quadratic equation looks like. And to solve that, we have this formula, x equals negative b, so the negative of the linear term coefficient, plus or minus the root of b squared, so that coefficient again squared, minus four times a times c, four times this coefficient times this constant, all over 2a, two times the coefficient of the quadratic term. And that can be used to find the roots or solutions to any quadratic equation. Now, the quadratic equation we're going to use here in this example is we are actually going to find out what the x-intercepts are here. And remember, x-intercepts are any point on the x-axis occurs where y is 0. And so I'll replace y with 0. And so this is actually our quadratic equation. When we put 0 there, we would have 0 equals x squared minus 3x minus 2. And so in this quadratic equation, we need to identify what a and b and c are. a is the coefficient of the x squared, b is the coefficient of the linear term, and c is the constant in the end. And so a would be 1, b would be negative 3, and the c would be negative 2. And you should always copy your formula down. I'm not going to because of I don't have a lot of space here, and also my formula is written right here. So I'm going to fill in the a and b and c in place of uh, those values. And so this says negative b at the beginning here. So b negative negative 3 plus or minus the root of b squared. So we're squaring the negative 3 minus 4 times a times c. So minus 4 times a is 1. So there's the 1 there. Times c and c is negative 2. So we have a negative 2 here. All over 2a. So 2 times 1. a is 1 in the denominator. Now, negative negative 3 is 3. Underneath the square root, this would be 9. Negative 3 squared is 9. And then this will be actually plus 8. 4 times 1 times 2 is 8. We have a negative times a negative, so it ends up being adding the 8. So 9 and 8 add to 17. So 3 plus or minus the root of 17 over 2, those are actually the exact values of the x-intercepts. If you want to know what they are as decimals to verify that negative 0.5 and 3.5 are actually pretty close, then what we'd actually calculate is 3 plus the square root of 17 divided by 2 and 3 minus the root of 17 divided by 2. And so notice this is just a comma here. There's actually two roots because there's two intercepts here. And so in the calculator, we would actually do 3 minus the square root of 17 and divide it by 2 and then 3 plus the square root of 17 and divide it by 2. And so that will give us negative 0.56 and about 3.56. So we see that those estimates in the graph were actually pretty close but more accurately, those are the two x-intercepts. And we couldn't find those by factoring again because this quadratic will not factor, but the quadratic formula will find us what the actual roots are. Flipping over to the second page, we're asked to solve each of these using the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula will actually will work if the quadratic was factorable. Um, but if you can factor, it's generally a little bit less work than using the quadratic formula. So in A here, 3x squared minus 5x minus 4 is our quadratic equation. And so first of all, write down your formula, and then identify A and B and C. 
A would be 3, B would be negative 5, and C would be negative 4. And so the next step is to fill 3, negative 5, and negative 4 in place of the A, B, and C in the formula. Now, when we put negative 5 here, we have negative negative 5, which is 5, plus or minus the root of, and it's negative 5 squared, because the B is squared, minus 4 times A is 3, and C is negative 4, all over 2 times the A value, 2 times 3. So underneath the square root, negative 5 squared is 25, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 4 is 48. Now we have a negative times a negative, so that would be plus 48. 2 times 3 in the denominator is 6. So adding 25 and 48 underneath the square root sign, we have the root of 73. So those are the exact solutions to the original quadratic equation. 5 plus or minus the root of 73 over 6. And so we would go 5 plus the root of 73 divided by 6, 5 minus the square root of 73 divided by 6. And so if you evaluate those two, this works out to be 2.26, and 5 minus the root of 73 divided by 6 is negative 0.59. These again are the exact solutions. These are the solutions approximated to two decimal places. Now if the quadratic equation is not set equal to zero like it is in A, then you should do that first. And so I would rearrange and add 24x to both sides and add 16 to both sides. And then my rearranged equation would look like this. I would have 9x squared plus 24x plus 16 equal to zero. And so that's the first thing you should do, and then identify your a, b, and c, and write down your formula. So here's my formula. a would be 9, b would be 24, and c would be 16. And so we substitute 9, 24, and 16 in place of a and b and c. And so that's what it looks like. Now underneath the square root, we have 24 squared is 576. And 4 times 9 is 36, times 16 is another 576. Underneath the, square root, underneath the square root sign, we actually end up getting 0. And since the square root of 0 is 0, this actually just simplifies to negative 24 over 18. By the way, if that works out to be 0 underneath the square root, that means you actually could have factored this. It's actually one of those perfect square trinomials. The uh, uh, square root of 9x squared is uh, 3x, square root of 16 is 4. So this would actually factor into 3x plus 4 all squared. But the quadratic formula will still give us the correct solution. So since this is 0, again, we just get negative 24 over 18. And we can divide a 6 into each of those, reducing to negative 4 thirds. And so that's the only solution here. A lot of times you'll get for quadratic equations two solutions, but once in a while you only get one, like in B here.